Your tears are so costly and precious to God. He's moved by your tears and cried to Him. There are times and seasons when everything around you is just like the heat of the sun and the crushing effect of a pressing machine. Many times, you don't know what to do but cry to God. Some do not know what it means to cry to God when they're in need, because throughout their life, they've been relying on mortal men for help and strength. So when they're in a financial lack, the first thing they do is to run around looking for someone to help them. They begin to beg for help from mortal men, reducing their value in the sight of people. That might settle your need for the present, but they can never help you walk in the best of God. The best of God is not begging for help and looking for who to help you. The best of God is in seeking God and God only. No one has faith that gets God bypassed from their lives when they're in need. It's not possible. The faith that pleases God, the Word of God says that it is the faith that believes that God exists in the present and that He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. When you seek God only during times of pain and trouble, you'll walk in strong satisfaction and joy after the answers have come. Have you been waiting patiently on the Lord for many years for something specific that you need from Him? And you have vowed within yourself that you'll not run to man for help, but the manifestations have not yet come after waiting this long. Or have you been uncertain about God's presence in the time of help in your life? And you're wondering if God answers your prayers, or your prayers landed on the ceiling and bounced back. This is the word of encouragement and assurance to you today that God heard your cry. God is emotional, and that's why He created man with emotions and feelings. He is the one that created us and put in us emotions and feelings so that we can express ourselves to Him. This is why when God made you, He didn't make you without free will. He made you with a will to choose and with an emotion to express your personality. He created us to worship, not as a robot who does what he wants and that's all. God wanted a relationship with man. That is why He gave us an emotion. The kind of prayer that's recorded, that makes tremendous power available and works, is the that the heartfelt kind of prayer that is coming from your innermost being. God doesn't always go for perfection. He's more interested in sincerity than perfection. Maybe you're in that time of your life where everything seems to be very tight for you, and you cried to God, and now you're confused and doubting that God heard your cry. This is to prove to you that your tears were not in vain. He heard your cry and He's going to answer your prayers. God can be trusted. One of the most difficult things for people to believe is that God can be trusted. They doubt if He will not forsake them or leave them to chance. They believe He'll see them crying and seek His help and He'll reject them. But the reason for this wrong perspective in their minds is that they do not read their Bibles. The Word of God says that people err because they don't know the power of God in the Scriptures. No one in the Scriptures ever cried to God and didn't receive an answer in prayer. There is no one that God has rejected when they cried to Him, because that's not His character and nature. God is a God of mercy and compassion. God is your Father. Just imagine a father who sees his child crying to him for help or provision and claim to have a dull ear to his cry. That is a wicked father. Jesus gave a word of encouragement to us in Luke 11. He said, Which one of you can have a child who is crying for fish and you will give him a stone? Of which one of you have a child crying for bread and you give him a serpent? Then he says, If you are evil and can give good gifts to your children, how much your heavenly father? The phrase how much is so enlightening. God can never see you suffer and not run to help you. He is your ever-present help in time of trouble. If God leaves you when you're crying to Him, then He cannot be called your helper. You don't need help when you have everything already sorted out. The reason you need help is that you lack something in the physical. That's why God says to you, Ask and I will give you. If you have asked Him, He has heard your cry. Can we believe the God that gave up His Son for us? 
Then he asks us the question, if I can give my only begotten son and give up to shame and mocking and spitting, how much more can I freely give you all these things? That's a rhetorical question that needs to be answered in our hearts every time. Why do we doubt that God has heard our cries? Is it because everywhere in our hearts, we don't believe that God will love us so much and that he'll leave us to suffer? If God can give his best gift and the most beautiful gift heaven has, how much more will he give you the lesser and little gifts? God has your best interest at heart. He wants you to have what you're longing for. He doesn't need anything, so he can't be stingy and withhold what he knows he has to help you. God is always willing to give you all that you've desired. So when you've cried to him and you do not yet see the manifestations, the problem is not with God, but on the side of those forces that are opposing you from making progress in life. One story that assures us about the certainty of God answering our cry when we ask him for anything is the story of Israel, who was under the bondage of the Egyptians. The Egyptians so hated the Israelites that they kept them under harsh discipline and torments for many years. The child of Israel, who was God's covenant, did not cry to God concerning the matter. They kept enduring the harsh bondage of the Egyptian taskmasters until one day they came back to their senses and they cried to God. There's a wonderful statement that's recorded when they cried to God. It says that God had respect for them because they'd cried for him. Why? Because he remembered the covenant of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Many don't realize that the reason why God will answer their prayers and cries has nothing to do with how perfect they are in their behavior or not. It all has to do with a covenant that sealed their relationship with him, which is the work of Christ on the cross. When you cry to God, he already heard you because you are in a covenant and you are his very own child, which he loves so much. Knowing he has heard your cry, you just have to wait patiently for him to perform his word on you to pass. You don't have to pressure yourself and be worried about what to do or what not to do. You just have to rely on him. That if he has said that he has heard your cry and he's moved by your tears, then he'll bring your answers to pass in due time. Child of God, your manifestation is coming shortly. As you wait, keep thanking him because he has heard your cry and keep pleasing him till the end. Blessings. There was a king in the Bible called Hezekiah who God already spoke to through the prophet Isaiah that he had 15 years to live and he was sick to death. Now we all know that when God speaks, he speaks for action and it is law. This was already a prophecy set in motion that got Hezekiah worried and troubled. Maybe that's what you're experiencing right now. Look at what Hezekiah did. He did not say that because God had prophesied then it'll come to pass on its own. He turned to the Lord and cried to him. That shows how much God values tears, that he would override his word to make sure that he answered Hezekiah's prayers and extended his years of living. Tears mean a lot to God. There's a popular saying that God is not emotional and he's not moved by tears, but just by bold faith. We just believe and speak the word. That's not true at all. The word of God says he heard his cry and he was moved by his tears.